Dr. Deer. Brought to you by Buck Forage. Well, James, we spent some time working on small properties and talking about how to manage those small right. tracks for whitetails. I've got a couple questions for you about native forage. Oh, okay. Uh, first of all, what is native forage? How important is it on small properties, and can we promote and introduce it? Native forage is critical. In any, in any nutrition management program for your deer, the backbone of that nutrition program is the natural forage that's out there. Now, basically, we're talking about just two groups of plants. We're talking about browse plants or brush, and we're talking about forbs or weeds. You know, deer don't eat that much grass. So we're, and we're looking, in the case of browse, you know, the deer, deer zone is this tall. Right. So as long as we keep the vegetation this tall or below my hand, you know, it's gonna be available to the deer. Sure. So we're always wanting to do things like fire and things to control the, 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 forward, the shrubs that are out there, the browse. Right. Okay. Now, one that's, that we get very little attention to is growing forbs or weeds. Okay. And annual forbs or weeds are the ones that the deer really like. And so annual means we got to start them over every year. Sure. And one of the easiest things you could do is to get out there with your tractor and disc and either, either in the early fall or in the early spring, disc up strips and you even fertilize them. Okay. And when you do that, it, if, you, if you disc in the fall, you get one suite of plants. You come back and disc in the spring, you get another different suite of plants. Wow. And if you fertilize them, you've got what we call invisible food plots. Sure. So burning and mechanical manipulation of browse and disking and fertilization produces the forbs. Wow. Well, that's a great and simple tool that anybody can do regardless of their property size. Yes. Like you said, even if you do have a, a series of food plots, just go around the edge, open it up a bit, yeah. and all of a sudden you're introducing a, a, a greater variety of plant species yep. and you know some really preferred food sources for your deer. Right. What, what I hope we've portrayed in this series is you've got to have a mindset of making food and cover for your deer. You're always thinking, how am I going to improve the food and cover for our deer? And if you do that, I guarantee you, you're going to have better deer hunting and you're going to have better deer on your property. Hey, that's what it's all about. Yes, sir. Well, folks, I'm Haynes Shelton. And I'm James Kroll. And this is North American Whitetail.